Hello guys, hope you have been having a very lovely day. In this video, we will be learning about the jump function. So jump is actually a function that is used to skip a specific part in a program. So a jump function is essentially of two types. The first is the jump with no return. And the second is a jump with a return. So first let us look at the jump function with no return. So this function is really easy. For example, your main program has a number of inputs and a number of outputs, that is a number of coils, what I mean to say. So this is your ladder logic in which I want to jump from this I want to jump from this coil to this and there is a lot more here so all I need to do is I need to use the jump function here and I need to create a label at the coil where I want to jump to so let us look at an example that will help uh, clear this part. So I will assume a ladder logic that is like this. So this in this ladder logic I have the jump function here and a label here. So what this label actually does is that it recognizes that the program must jump from one specific part to the label so now let's look at the execution of this program as we know a ladder logic is always executed from the top after the first lines execution it comes to the second coil if this input is on that is if this jump coil is enabled then it automatically jumps to 07 so it keeps searching for label 07 now that it is now that it finds the label 07 here it does not execute these lines and from here on it goes on executing the program so this jump function is essentially used to skip a part of a program and this jump function does not cause a return what one must remember here is that the jump number what we are giving here must match with the label number now let us look at another example in which there are multiple jumps. Uh, I can use this uh, ladder logic itself. So yeah. So I have a jump 07 label here and now I'm adding another jump here. So yeah. Now after executing the first line, it goes to the second line. If this input is on, that means if this jump function is enabled, then it automatically jumps to the label 07. If this jump is not on, that is if this input is in the off state, then it goes on to execute the next line as usual. Now if this input is on, that is the second jump function is on, then it goes to the label 07. So why I'm uh, telling you about this example is that multiple jump functions can have the same label. So you can jump from any part of the program to the same label. So this is all about the jump function without return. Now let us look at the jump function which has a return. So as the name indicates, this function will not allow you, uh, sorry, this function will allow you to come back to the program. That is, which is usually the next line of the program. For example, let me draw a lot of logic. In this jump function with a return, the keyword used is JSR, which stands for jump to subroutine. 
for example i am saying jump to subroutine and uh, one which means it goes back to another part which is not part of the main program it executes that part and then comes back to the subroutine by returning to the next line in the main program to help you understand better let me do this for you here is your main program i'm not drawing the coils here is your main program and here is a subroutine so in the main program i have uh, created a jump to subroutine here and in the so uh, it jumps it, this this is your subroutine this is your subroutine so it jumps to this subroutine which has the label here and in this subroutine it has something called return so after executing from the label to the return in this subroutine it comes back to the main program uh, uh, to the line after your jump to subroutine i hope uh, this thing is clear because this is important in in this jump with return function your main program is this and your subroutine is this so what happens is let me yeah so what happens is wherever i use this jump to subroutine this jumps to that specific subroutine for example subroutine 1 it goes to subroutine 1 and it executes a subroutine from the label to the return part of the program and from the return part of the program it comes back to the main program and where in the main program does it return to it returns to that line that is immediately after the uh, line where we have used the jump to subroutine function so this is how the jump function with return works so now let us look at um, a real example where i'll draw you the ladder logic so this is the ladder logic which i have chosen and say i'm using the jump to subroutine uh, say 02 function here and the subroutine here has the label 02 so what happens is after executing till here it jumps it jumps to this subroutine and at the uh, say for example there are a number of lines in the subroutine and this is where the return is present and what happens at this return is it returns to the line where the um, jsr has been it returns to the line uh, that is immediately after the jsr uh, functions coil and the line immediately after jsr here is this for example if there was another line here in the main function then what happens is after executing this subroutine it goes back to this coil right so this is how the jump with return works now uh, we have talked a lot about this thing called subroutines so let me tell you that usually in a program we use not one but multiple subroutines and these multiple subroutines are called among themselves and this is called nested subroutines so let us look at a block diagram that clearly explains about nested subroutines so what you're seeing first is your main program and this is my subroutine 1 and this is my subroutine 2 so what happens is in my main program in one line i am using i am using jsr1 so and here is the label and the return and um the subroutine 2 also has a label and a return so in my main function i have used jump to subroutine 1 what happens is 
it jumps from here to the label in subroutine 1 and from there in this I have used JSR2 from here it jumps to the subroutine 2 and after executing all of subroutine 2 it comes back to subroutine 1 near the return and from subroutine 1 it comes back to the main program to the line after the JSR function coil. So this is how nested subroutines are. I hope you have understood this. Uh, this is your main function, your subroutine 1 and subroutine 2. Where you have called the main uh, subroutine 1 and the main function, it jumps from that line to subroutine 1. And in subroutine 1, I am calling a subroutine 2. Then it jumps to subroutine 2. And then after executing all of subroutine 2, it comes back to subroutine 1. And from there, after completing it, it goes back to the main function to the line succeeding or to the line after the subroutine 1. So this is how nested subroutines work. Um, hope you have found it informative. Thank you and have a lovely day.